Hello, my dearest science nerds and welcome to my channel Let's Chemistry. My name is George and I have decided to dedicate this channel to the chemistry projects I make at home in my free time. To begin with, I am not a professional chemist and some of you might find my abilities miserable. Please leave comments and I will try to do it better next time. So, we are open for criticism here. The channel will be dedicated to organic chemistry, organic synthesis. Many things remain a mystery for me. So I hope to find the answers together and hope we will have fun here. With this helium balloon, we are celebrating the first video on this channel. But after the celebration, we are going to use it in our first project. We have been thinking about a very interesting substance to synthesize but first, we have to make our building blocks. I am not going to tell you what we are cooking here yet, but the first building block we produce will be allyl alcohol. A very interesting compound. The reaction itself looks simple, but you will see it is time consuming requires certain knowledge and safety measures. Otherwise, you will be punished and your lab will be full of tear gas and subsequently you will cry. For this reaction, we will need glycerin, formic acid, and potassium hydroxide trap to destroy toxic acrolein, which might be formed as a side product of this reaction. We also need a balloon connected to our apparatus, with which we displace atmospheric oxygen. It is possible to do it without a neutral atmosphere, but your yields will be miserable in this case. We need a strong heating source, like heating mantle and we need to reach 235 degrees Celsius. As you can see, we have attached pressure equalized addition funnel, because we have to add portions of formic acid later on. The system must remain sealed from the atmospheric oxygen all the time. Moreover, fumes of the lacrimatory compounds such as allyl alcohol and allyl formate from the reaction vessel don't have the most pleasant smell. We have connected two condensers just as a precaution to catch all the alcohol which is produced in large quantities, as reaction reaches the required temperature. The boiling point of allyl alcohol is 97 degrees Celsius and it will be shot out of the reaction vessel heated to 235 C and more. The vacuum outlet will be connected to the sodium hydroxide trap to destroy all the acrolein formed. But first things first, let's make a strong sodium hydroxide solution. To the tall beaker add enough potassium hydroxide pallets and water stir to dissolve everything. And submerge the tube to the bottom. To another beaker weight out 276 grams of glycerin and add 82 grams of 90% formic acid. In another beaker weight out 175 grams of 90% formic acid. In the video, we made a mistake and measured only a third of the required quantity. Because of this, we had to add a missing acid. Later on, we had to open an apparatus, and we had been punished for our mistake and cried a lot. We are going to add it portion by portion from our addition funnel. Stir the glycerin and the formic acid in the first beaker to dissolve everything. Temporarily disconnect the pressure equalized funnel and add to the reaction vessel. In our case, it is a 1 liter 3 neck round bottom flask. Return the addition funnel loaded with 175 grams of 90% formic acid and put the clamp back. Open the stopcock on the balloon attachment and start slowly displacing the atmospheric air with helium. You can see the bubbles escaping from the system. In the video, I have a little helium saved in the balloon just in case, but it is not necessary. I have realized it later on and squeezed the leftover of helium into the apparatus. Start the stirrer, set the heating to the maximum and let the show begin. The whole process is very time consuming but I will try to demonstrate the most important parts of it. As the temperature rises, you can see the condensation on a flask wall. There is a small evolution of carbon dioxide as well. Our goal is to reach 235 degrees Celsius and maintain for 25 minutes. Above 120 133 degrees liquid starts to boil vigorously and some quantity of distillate is collected. This is mostly a formic acid. Some of the sources are suggesting to change the collecting flask after this point. The formic acid could be reused for the next run, but we are simply going to collect everything. There is just a little evolution of CO2 gas at this time. Meanwhile, the temperature continues to rise. We have reached 226 degrees Celsius. The carbon dioxide evolution has increased and more distillate is coming over. We are getting closer to the desired temperature threshold. After reaching 235 degrees, we lower the heating mantle, but the heating source is too strong and we overshoot a temperature, but not much. You can see the white fumes coming from the reaction flask and escaping from the beaker. A clear sign of decomposition. We must try to keep the reaction temperature under control. We have been trying to find the best distance to maintain our goal temperature for 25 minutes. The timing I have been following was taken from the Science Madness Forum, 
the procedure described by Blackstar, but I haven't taken into consideration the fact that I have scaled up the reagents five times. Consequently, the required time to complete the first run of the reaction has increased. The best advice to follow is the distillation rate. As soon as you get just one drop per 10 seconds, heating must be discontinued. It took 45, 50 minutes in my case. You can observe violent boiling and carbon dioxide evolution. In the receiving flask cloudy distillate is collected. Heating was continued, until all the formic acid had reacted. After that, we had turned off the heating mantle and cooled the reaction flask down almost to room temperature. After cooling we can add a third of the acid from the addition funnel. In my case, as I already told you, I had only one portion preloaded, so I added everything and had to add additional formic acid for the next two runs later on. The second run has gone as smoothly as the first one. The second time temperature was kept at 239, 240 degrees. In the third run, the temperature was allowed to reach 245. After all three runs were completed, you can see the little amount of residue left in the flask. It is slightly yellow, with greenish tint viscous liquid. Almost 500 milliliters cloudy distillate was collected. We have placed the collected liquid to a large 2 liter 3 neck and we are ready to proceed with our workup. First, let's check the pH of the liquid. It is acidic because of the formic acid present in the distillate. Make a 16% sodium hydroxide solution. For this, we took 80 grams of sodium hydroxide and 400 grams of distilled water. Stirred sodium hydroxide to dissolve and added our solution to the distillate. We have noticed the immediate color change to a light yellow. Check the pH it is strongly alkaline. We have turned on the stirring and heating the flask to start reflux. At this stage, we are hydrolyzing allyl formate. One hour of reflux is enough. During the reflux, the liquid has darkened to the brown yellowish color. We let everything cool down till the next day and had started the distillation process. We haven't used a separatory column because it is very difficult to achieve good separation of allyl alcohol and water this way. And I have not got a good enough separatory column. Allyl alcohol forms a water zeotrope with a boiling temperature of 88 degrees Celsius. I have decided to collect the fraction coming over from 85 to 99 degrees and then dry collected liquid with calcium chloride. We don't need dry absolute alcohol for our next reaction step, but I was interested in how calcium chloride works and decided to perform further drying steps. So, the next day simple distillation was carried out. At the end of the distillation drops coming from the condenser were too diluted. You can see the difference in the density of the coming liquid. At this point, distillation was stopped and 175 milliliters approximately 70% allyl alcohol was collected. The liquid had an unpleasant smell and strong lacrimatory properties. To dry our allyl alcohol, I had placed the filtrate to 250 milliliters Erlenmeyer flask and added portion by portion dry calcium chloride. In total 120 grams of dry calcium chloride had been used. To help with the process I had introduced stirring and warmed up the flask. At the end of the addition, a small layer of liquid was separated. I was surprised by the small volume of the separated water layer. I had moved everything to the separatory funnel and removed the bottom water layer. After the separation, we placed everything to the 250 milliliters round bottom flask and had added anhydrous calcium carbonate. We had decided to distill the alcohol over calcium carbonate. Simple distillation had been carried out. The alcohol fraction was distilled at 94 degrees Celsius. According to the temperature, there had been some water present but it is much better than before. I will not process it further to avoid losses of product. It is not absolutely dry but pure and dry enough for our next step. A total of 123 grams of allyl alcohol was collected which represents 70% of yield. Not bad assuming the losses during workup procedures.